Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be showing you how to set up SDR Trunk. And we're also going to make a series out of this where we show the different features that SDR Trunk has to offer. Now today's video we're basically going to set up a system and get the program set up and run a system with one STR dongle. Now this one's going to be very technical and it's going to be a lot of the pre-laid foundation before we can actually get into the nitty gritty. So let's start with some Again, basic foundation. So what what is an SDR? Well, an SDR is called a software-defined radio, and it looks like a USB. It's literally what it looks like. It's like a little rectangular USB stick, but it's not used to store data. It's actually used to listen to radio frequencies and radio systems, similar to a unication scanner, a unication pager, or a Uniden or Whistler scanner, and it's a nice thing about SDR, it's a lot cheaper. Um, I bought my own Amazon, it's called RTL SDR dongle, and I got it for about $25. Comes with some antennas and stuff. It's very, very sleek. It's also cheap as well. Um, but but besides the the radio stuff, you can do stuff with satellites and aircraft with ADSB and some called A cars. It's really awesome, all the stuff you can do, but we're going to focus on just the, the public safety and the actual radio voice aspect of it. So SDR trunk will decode a handful of um, types of modes, as they're called. So you have FM narrow, which is your analog, as they're called. It's not digital. It's kind of like an FM radio station, kind of has the static and all that stuff in it. But then we start getting into some digital and uh, trunking stuff. So with digital, SDR trunk can perform APCO P25 phase one and two, analog, analog conventional as well, as I said just a second ago, narrow FM. And it'll also do the trunking as well, which is what we're mainly going to focus on because every not every public safety, but a lot of public safety agencies, especially in the United States, use P25 trunking. They also have, SDR trunk also has LTR, which is a analog uh, trunking system. We also have um, DMR, which actually recently just came out on the SDR trunk software, which is a huge, huge thing because ever since I've had it two years ago, it only could do P25 phase one, and along the way they had phase two. It will also decode MDC-1200, which is what a lot of um, analog, conventional public safety agencies use. But more on that later. So let's go ahead and sh show you how to download it. Now, just to clarify, I am on a MacBook Air. Uh, my other computer, which is a Windows, is being used to stream a Broadcastify stream. So I'm using it on the Mac here. There will be a few things that may look different, but once we get into the program itself, they're pretty much the same. May, may look cosmetically different, but I'll explain the, the between the differences the best I can. So you're going to come over here to github.com. I'm going to leave a link in the description on where to get this software. And you're going to want to scroll past all this. This is the code. I mean, if you're a technical savvy guy, this is a perfect place for you. I don't, not the most technically advanced person, so I'm going to skip past that. And you're going to see the read.md sections look like this. You're going to go to the download section. And here you can actually scroll through all the different types of download or all the different type, different versions. Excuse me, I cannot talk today. But you're looking for version 0 0.5.0 Alpha 6. As recording this video in, I think, November 18, 2020, I think is the correct date. I'm going to get my dates off here. But um, this was the last release was 25 days ago. And it actually added a few things, including. DMR, which actually no DMR was added down here as you can see. I'm not updated because it does automatically download and we'll talk about that in a minute. But so down here you can see the features for this update. It was minor bug fixes. There are a few warning things that you need to keep in mind. You will need JMBE version. Uh, this is a digital um, library that will let you it'll synthesize and decode the digital signals we'll talk about that later which is nice and you can see here highlighted here you don't have to install and compile the library yourself it'll automatically do it for you which back before they added that was a pain but luckily you can do it straight in the program itself 
So you can come on down to assets down here. It's, it's not going to be shown. You just click on it. And you have your different, um, these top four are the ones you want to focus on because these are going to be zip files. These two down here are source code. If you want source code, go for it. But uh, I'm going to be using OS, OS X, which is Mac. And there's also Windows down here for you uh, Windows users. And there's some Linux up here as well if you use a Linux operating system. But we're going to do Mac. So I've actually already downloaded it. You would click on it and it would start your download. But, um, but we'll move on to that in just a second. Now, the other thing that this thing does have, and I forgot to mention, was it has radio reference import. And if you don't know what radioreference.com is, we can show you here. It is a database of not just the U.S., but the but basically a lot of these other countries in the world where it will actually show you radio frequencies and information. So just to give you a quick little example, you want to click your state. For example, I'm going to click on Kentucky because that's the state I live in. And we're going to just, let's pick a county. Let's go ahead and pick uh, Louisville, Jefferson County up in Louisville, one of the biggest city in the state basically. And you can see it has all of the, uh, you see here, these are the frequencies, the license, and all that stuff. But the main stuff is you want to look for, first of all, you want to look for the type of mode you're looking for. So mainly you want to focus on DMR and digital. And you can see down here, these are the trunk systems. So let's go to the main system for this area. So this is the Louisville Emergency Communications Network, or as they call it, MetroSafe. And what MetroSafe is, it's got all the public safety on it. And we could actually import this straight inside of SDR Trunk if you have a premium account. If you do not have a premium account, you I think you have to pay, I think, like five, ten dollars a month, or you can provide a broadcast to fly stream or call note as it's called, and you get that for free, and you can use the import feature. And if but what's nice is that you if you don't have you don't have the money to pay for it, I know these are at the time of recording this video, it's November, it's some tough times. If you don't have the money, I understand. But um, if you don't have the premium, you still have this um, resource to use to put the information in, luckily. So, yeah, it has all the talk groups and all that stuff, which is nice. So, with that being said, let's go on ahead and show you when it downloaded what it looks like. So, let me go ahead and minimize this for you. As you can see, it actually comes, I saved it to my desktop to make it easier. So as you can see, it came in a zip file. Now what Mac does is it likes to automatically unzip it for me. So I'm going to go on ahead and click on it. It's going to extract it and it's going to put it in a folder for some reason on top of each other right here. So all I'll have to do is just open the folder up. Now on Windows, you probably want to right click and um, Usually this is, again, different from Windows, but you right-click, you hit Extract, and you want to extract it on your desktop, and it will pop out a folder just like mine. So it will probably just say STR Trunk Windows or something like that. But this is going to look exactly the same. This is the same exact folders. you got the bin file, which is what we're actually going to be looking at, the conf, which is config, legal, which is legal, and lib, which is library. You're looking for the bin file here, so I'm going to click on that. And you can see we have four files here. We have Java. Key tool, SDR dash trunk, and SDR dash trunk dot bat. Now, for Mac, you want to click on this SDR trunk. Now, on Windows, you want to do the dot bat file, which it will actually look like this. Somehow, the Mac actually has it in their files for this one. But you just double click. And on Mac, it's going to want me to open it because it doesn't trust it. And it's going to tell me it needs to be verified. So, in order to verify it on Mac, what you want to do is you're gonna you're not gonna hit cancel on this. You're actually gonna to go to your settings here, and you're gonna to go to your security and privacy. You're gonna to go to general, and at the bottom it's gonna say Java, which is what's blocking has was blocked by it because it it's an unidentified developer. Um, SDR trunk does not have a virus. I've, I've ran it for about a year and a half, two years, and it runs just fine. You want to allow anyway, and what it's going to do is, is it, it's it, it, and the problem is it automatically stops the process. So you want to close the terminal out and do it on here, and it'll say again it cannot verify. Go ahead and open it. Now on Windows, it won't let you, it won't make you go through this because Mac is very strict. Mac and Apple are very strict on the security. On Windows, it may tell you something along the lines of, you know, on Windows Defender may come up and say, are you sure you want to run this? You hit run anyway. And um, once you open it, you'll get this, which 
this gray part on top is actually your waterfall and your uh, spectrum analyzer and that actually will show the radio spikes in the spectrum. We'll get to that in a minute when we actually plug in the RTL SDR dongle. But let's first come over here to the view. We're going to go down first things first. We're going to go look at our preferences. And we're going to go each one of these one by one. So first things first is audio. Duplicate calls. If you want duplicate calls, go ahead. I have turned off all of these options. I've turned on all of them, on all of them, correction, because I don't want duplicate calls. If you want that, that's fine. Now output tones. Now output tones, you can see start priority and drop tone do not monitor. It will send out a tone for these certain um, settings when it hears it. If, if an audio start tone means if audio comes through, it will automatically play the tone. I have it turned off. I don't want that. Um, pre on my other computer, I actually have it set up to sound like a push to talk on a Harris radio if it's on a trunked frequency, if you understand what I mean by that. But here's the thing about the audio output device. Now you have two settings, and you can see right here. I have mono and stereo for my default, you know, I'm going to look at the built-in output, that's more than likely what I'm going to use, but that's my, my default audio device is built-in output, mono and stereo. Now stereo will use your left and right speakers. Two uh, voices are coming through at the same time, it's going to go to your left speaker and your right speaker, and it's going to be confusing to hear unless you can isolate it with something like a, a, an audio editor, or like, I, I don't know what it's called, but it, it will basically show two... Uh, talkers, if there's two people talking, it's going to come right at you at the same time. Mono limits it to one, so that way you're not hearing it all come out crazy, which I have it set to mono for that purpose. If I come over here and record, yeah, I can change the format. I keep it MP3, simply streamlined. As you can see here, I actually have, this is the JMBE library. This is very important. You are not going to be able to decode digital radio, radio channels without this setting set up. Now I'm going to reset. You can reset it and reinstall it. I'm actually going to reset it for the sake of this video to show you how it's done. Now, when you actually click on it, I'll show you an example. If I click on it now, it's going to say yeah, I don't have anything. And it'll tell you to create library. I'm going to click on create library, and it says, "Hey, there's an update available. Would you like to update?" I'm going to say yes. And it's going to come with this. It's going to automatically give you a, a library storage area. If you want to change that, go right ahead. But I just let default, and it's going to ask you know. It's going to talk to you about the source code. Read this if, you know, read this. It talks about the source code and, you know, just a warning. I'm going to and hit yes. And what it's going to do is it's going to download it and it's going to download all of that information. It's going to create it for you. So, and then on Mac, it's going to ask if it wants to access your files and your on your desktop where your application for SDR trunk is. Windows, I don't think, makes you do this. But again, Mac is more strict. So there, it's updated. So let's go ahead and go to channel events. Your timestamp format, you can change, you know, what it looks like. Mine's set to, actually, I'll set it here. So mine says, you know, 2020, the year, dash the month, dash the date, dash the time and minute and hours, minutes and seconds. Keep it like that. Talk group ID, you can do dex, decimal, hexadecimal. These are, I think, the default settings. I usually do decimal, it's easier to read. And again, these are the talk groups, so, you know, Sometimes hexadecimal gets confusing, but it's 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 a preference of yours. Uh, directories, these are you know all your directories. I keep them default because it keeps it all in one central folder. You can change them around if it makes it easier for you. Now the channelizer type, this is more for um, scanning. It is default to polyphase. I usually just leave it default. It, you can read into it further. Um, if you want to and change it, just be aware that you, you you're radio traffic, scan speed, or anything else like that could be affected. Now, once we're done here, it's going to exit me out like that. I'm going to come back over here. Now, first things first, let's go over how to, let's first things first, let's show you how to set up your SDR device. Now, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to actually plug my SDR in really quick. So, what I'm going to do is, is I'm actually, the problem is, it doesn't automatically update if, um, it won't automatically detect if you added something, so you have to shut down the program and reopen it. Unfortunately, that's something that maybe I'm missing. But what I'm going to do is, is that it's once I plugged it in, it's going to look something like this. And this is your spectrum right here, where it shows all of the um, 
it shows all the different radio spikes. Like right here is a is a spike for um, Bluegrass Army Depot where I live, and um, it shows all the different spikes. And down here is the waterfall, so you can see a history and the strength. The more closer to red, the more powerful the signal is. That's what you want. So we're we're gonna end up on we're gonna end off on this video by showing you how to set up your tuner perfectly. So all of your plugged in devices will be right here. And what you're going to do is you're going to click on the one you want. And it automatically, it, this will be locked. If it's locked onto a channel like this, I'll show you for example. If I click on this channel right here, so I'm going to click. You have to, unfortunately, in like SDR Sharp, if you know what that is, you have to manually set up the frequency yourself. I'm not going to do that right now, but if, if it's locked onto a channel where it's receiving data, this will be grayed out if it's set up. If it's set up for a certain channel, it will be grayed out. Basically, what you want to do is you want to keep everything the same. It will auto-correct the, the uh, PPM for you, which is nice. You can do it manually if you want. I just keep it automatically. You can change the name of the configuration if you want. It's up to you. Uh, master gain, you can check the gain. So watch this uh, little spike right here if I go down to zero. It goes down, completely gone. So what master gain will do is it will actually control how much power it's being able to receive. So if you open the gain, you can actually do manual or automatic. You can actually do manual mixing with that if you want. If you go automatic, it'll do it automatically for you. You can do it manually. Personally, I go up to the highest setting. Keep this at 240. I don't know why I dropped down there. You want to go up to the highest setting. Now, be careful. That could actually put a lot of stress on your device, and it may it may allow in a lot of interference, so especially if you have power lines or you have a lot of you – maybe you have, if you have a radio transmitter closer to you, it may affect your um, – your performance on what you can listen to because of your gain set too high. So it, for, for starters, I, I keep it at high because I know my area pretty well. But if you're newer to it, I would just click automatic and then work with your settings down there. Remember, the lower the, the lower the number, the less it's going to open and let in. But the higher number is, the more it's going to let in, if that makes sense. So the highest is 495. That is the highest it will let you go. But other than that, that's a basic setup. Now, I do want to clarify before we move forward. This thing can scan with one dongle, one RTL SDR dongle. The only problem is that you're going to have a lot harder time receiving all the data and the information because what happens is, is that the dongle is going to jump from the control channel to the voice channel where that, informa where that voice is coming from to jump right back. So it's not as effective. It'll work, but it's not effective, especially, especially if you're on a bigger system like maybe one in Chicago or in New York. I know New York's analog, but maybe like a bigger system like uh, Cincinnati for Cincinnati, Cincinnati, Ohio. I'm going to say Kentucky. Cincinnati, Ohio, and um, maybe bigger cities like Louisville is another one. So what I recommend doing is, is having at least two. One acts as a control channel. The other one works as a voice channel. But after that point, you need a minimum of two. I will um, leave in the description a link to the Amazon link to buy the RTL SDR dongle, about $25 before taxes and shipping. Also, I will link the uh, SDR download page to get yourself started with this video. In the next video, we will talk about how to use the radio reference import feature and decode, download, set up, and decode a phase one P25 trunking system. So thank you all and have a good day.